Philosophy! Shed. Aristotle was a Greek philosopher who lived around 380 BC and is in many ways considered the greatest of all time. Because Aristotle's life was immediately followed by the Alexandrian conquest, then the Roman conquest, then Christian conquest, then the Dark Ages, no other philosopher came anywhere close to matching Aristotle's status for over a thousand years. He was also incredibly proficient as unlike most philosophers who specialised in a narrower field of thought, Aristotle is well known for his work on ethics as it is for metaphysics, political theory, rhetoric, literary theory, medicine, theology and science. It's said that he knew more in his lifetime than anyone who ever lived before or since, although to be fair he did cheat a lot as many of his statements turn out to be false in such a way as could be corrected if Aristotle had simply looked, for example that flies have four legs and that women have fewer teeth than men. Nevertheless, Aristotle can at least be credited with the invention of formal logic, possibly the most valuable invention of all time, if also the simplest. Aristotle devised a form of deductive logic known as the syllogism, which is a way of figuring out new information from previously verified facts. For example, all philosophers are sexy, Aristotle is a philosopher, therefore Aristotle is sexy. This is a syllogism because if the first and second premise are both true, then the third statement, the conclusion, is true by necessity. If, however, one of the premises is not correct, for example, if it turns out that not all philosophers are sexy, then the conclusion is not necessarily true. Note, however, that it does not make the conclusion false. It simply means that despite popular opinion, being sexy is not a prerequisite to being a philosopher. Aristotle figured that everything in the world could be analysed in terms of two groups of features, incidental features and essential features. An incidental feature is any feature that doesn't affect something's placement in a category. For example, a fish can be red, blue, yellow or African savannah, but no matter what colour it is, it's still a fish. On the other hand, an essential feature is any aspect of something that is necessary for it to be that thing. For example, a fish that has no fins, no gills, doesn't live in water, has fur and whiskers, drinks milk and is named Archimedes Whiskers von Pussy Boots, loses any right it has to be known as a fish. For Aristotle, every statement that can be said about the world is either true or false. You can only have one or the other. Although this sounds perfectly reasonable, Aristotle nevertheless ran into a problem, namely the truth value of future statements. If I say, for example, that I'm totally going to get with that attractive lady and my friend says that she's just going to throw a drink in my face, which one of us is correct? If what my friend says is true, then it seems like the future is set. No matter what I do, I'm doomed to get pina colada in my hair and so it's futile to even bother. A popular response to this problem is to suggest that future events are neither true nor false because they haven't happened yet. But this presents its own problem because if I later walk up to the girl and try one of my terrible pickup lines and she does in fact throw her drink in my face and my friend says, see, I was right, I can't very well say, no, you weren't. It may seem like a silly thing to get hung up about, but it's an issue philosophy has been struggling with ever since. Although Aristotle was a student of Plato, he fundamentally disagreed with Plato's theory of forms. While Plato believed that all individual things were but a shadow of the most perfect example of that thing, Aristotle figured that Plato's forms can't be very good examples at all if they didn't exist anywhere in the world. Instead of appealing to mysterious forms in the sky to theorise about reality, Aristotle defines each individual thing in terms of four characteristics, which he calls the four causes. The matter is the substance that something is composed of, the form is the shape or structure that the matter takes, the source or efficient cause is whatever created it, and the final cause is the reason or purpose for which it was created. If you consider a watch, Aristotle would say its matter is the metal and plastic and whatever else it's made of, its form is the shape and mechanism that these parts take, its source is the watchmaker, and its purpose is to make sure I don't go over three minutes even when explaining something as huge and complex as Aristotle. This is nowhere close to everything Aristotle accomplished during his life. In fact, he wrote so much philosophy that it took the rest of us until the Renaissance to work through it all, and it was about that time that we realised to our horror that he'd been wrong about almost everything. Ironically, Aristotle himself would have been pissed off that it took us that long to question him.